So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I wanted to go over some of the, uh, I guess, ground rules for the presentation this afternoon um, before I turn it over to both Kelly and Carol. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to write those in real time in the chat window. There's a chat icon at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you put the questions in there, if Kelly or Carol cannot get to that question, in real time, we will certainly leave time at the end uh, to answer any questions uh, that they do not get to. Uh, as you have joined, your mic should have automatically been muted if you could remain on mute throughout the presentation so that we can keep down any potential background noise. Um, and lastly, uh, for those of you who are taking notes, wanted to also let you know that we will be recording um, the webinar, so you will have access to both the uh, webinar itself as well as the slides um, when we send that out uh, later. So that will be accessible to you in addition to any notes that you take. All right, and with that, I will turn it over to Kelly and Carol. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, and thank you for taking your time to come and join our webinar today. We appreciate it. We know how hectic things are as you get ready for the start back to school. My name is Kelly. I'm the Executive Vice President over our colleague in um, CRM practice here at Pirelli. I'm also joined by Carol Thomas. Carol? Thanks, Kelly, and thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Carol Thomas. I'm a Senior Vice President here at Pirelli, and I have responsibility uh, for uh, Banner and uh, Salesforce, and so we'll talk a little bit more later about uh, some of the Salesforce tools available to us. Thanks for being here. So to start off, we get it. Uh, your technology has to work for you and your department and your students in order to have one consistent experience across campus. And that's where we come in. We're Pirelli. We're not unknown, but a lot of people get lumped into that IT professional services category. And we like to think that we're different and we stand out amongst our counterparts in the industry. So we choose to employ a holistic approach with each of our clients. We meet, we talk with you, we wanna learn more about you because we're at our best when we know you best. We're always there for you. We offer 24 seven, 365 support. Um, we are very free with our independent and objective advice. Sometimes um, we share too much, but we're all very opinionated and we like to share our opinions and try and um, help in any way that we can. We also offer a satisfaction guarantee, which we think differentiates us amongst our competitors. So today what we wanted to cover was technology support for reopening and staying open during the pandemic. So the pandemic is moving from a short term crisis to an ongoing and involving risk unfortunately. And that's making this fall a fall that's unprecedented and it's unlike any other. So we, what we wanted to cover today was what are some of the challenges of reopening campus and staying open and what are some of the tools being used, whether they're things that you already have on your campus or things that you can purchase to add on to your existing technology on campus. So we wanted to start first with a poll and it's how are you going back to school? So are you choosing to employ hybrid teaching and learning options to support campus-based and online education? Are you using a flexible academic calendar, which we've been helping a number of schools with as they ad adapt to the changes going on across campus? Are we returning to in-person education for all or most courses or online education for all or most courses? And we know that there's been a, a, a lot of fluctuation even in the past couple days on how schools are choosing to offer courses this fall. Okay, it looks like uh, the majority half of the group are um, offering flexible academic calendars to support campus-based education. Then we have a tie in second place with hybrid teaching and online education for all or most courses. So thank you for that. 
I'm going to turn it over to Carol. So we wanted to uh, just recap some of the things that are going on in the world outside of our own institutions at this moment and really look at what's happening with the reopening plans. And as Kelly said, these are really changing um, on a daily basis. Schools that plan to fully reopen are, have, have gone fully online. Modality have ch modalities have changed uh, from uh, hybrid to online. Uh, semester start delays have happened and sometimes semester starting earlier happened so that schools could close earlier. We're also seeing uh, staggered class meeting times, both in terms of the structure of the classroom, as well as just the overall timing of how those, uh, how those meetings, uh, how those class meetings are scheduled in order to accommodate cleaning and other activities. So we just pulled a few uh, clips from the, the press that covers the higher end, head, higher ed industry um, and really noticing that those changes are, uh, are happening quickly uh, to respond to what's really going on in the world uh, that is, as Kelly said, unprecedented. From our professional organizations, uh, if you haven't already, you may find the EDUCAUSE site that's referenced on this, uh, this uh, slide to be very useful. Um, and what we, what we found from the EDUCAUSE surveys um, and what they're reporting out is that uh, the technology, in, in this case called the health management technology that's being used is really focusing on screening. So screening for symptoms, screening for wellness, um, workplace safety management, making sure that the right protections are in place for folks who are returning to campus as part of their work. And then also surveys, both of faculty, staff, and students about readiness to return to campus. Um, and in this, uh, in this uh, survey that we were looked at, 48% of survey response, respondents were building their own health screening uh, solutions. And so uh, one of the things Kelly will show you in a minute is, are some of the ways that that can happen within tools you may have. But we also, in our second uh, webinar, we'll talk about what some of our uh, client institutions are doing as well. We see colleges taking a variety of actions, but one that has, become, that has begun to emerge uh, are these uh, student agreements. So students are asked to be, asked to sign an agreement about their responsibilities as it relates to COVID-19 um, and ensuring that they are uh, caring for the culture of their institution. As Rice University suggested, it's a culture of care agreement that we're asking students to uh, to sign, to commit to, uh, that has to do with how they would manage uh, symptoms, how they would engage in social distancing, uh, agreeing to wear masks, agreeing to behaviors that um, are to some degree very unusual for college students. And uh, we find that these are uh, increasingly uh, prominent on college websites. Uh, one that we've provided the Rice University one here, but also Nukubo has collected um, a number of those as well. And then colleges, our sister colleges across, across this country and certainly even internationally are providing a number of responses to this that can help to inform all of us uh, as we think about the work that we need to accomplish to ensure a safe campus if that's what we're choosing to do both as a place of learning but as well as a workplace. So we've just compiled a few of the college websites that we thought might be useful, uh, useful to you. And then guidance from professional organizations outside of IT include Nikubo and of course the CDC. And the CDC has provided some general guidance for institutions of higher education uh, that need to be certainly extended based on both institutional mission, institutional goals, and the overall safety of the area within which an institution resides. This guidance not only affects how we deliver the learning, but also how we work at these institutions. One of the things the CDC guidance provides is a decision tree. Uh, and this decision tree is really related to uh, early on in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The question was, how do we deal with uh, a situation where a person has been on campus who is confirmed to have COVID-19, whether that's a student, faculty member, or staff member. Um, and the options are fairly straightforward, um, but the impact is very broad. So assessing the risk, what needs to happen at the institution, uh, both related to classes, to uh, building and facility closure, to cleaning, 
uh, practices to contact tracing uh, in consultation with local health officials uh, and other, act other things that may be taken to minimize the institutional risk. Uh, and then to identify if this particular case is a cause for concern for community spread uh, or if there is community spread. And then secondly, the minimal or moderate or substantial community spread uh, scenarios uh, that exist. So we've seen colleges and universities in, in various um, situations as it relates to both community spread and spread within the organization. Uh, and that's uh, one of the things that uh, continues to be of great concern, whether you're in a hot spot for COVID-19 or in a, a rural area that is not as heavily impacted. So we thought we would share this decision tree with you as a way of thinking um, about some of the things that you might, actions you might need to take. Thanks, Kelly. And then we have a second poll, and we're curious to find out what technology you're using to support the return to campus. And we have a list of items there, um, including health screening, uh, surveys, contact tracing, safety, workplace safety management, uh, readiness, exposure tracking, physical distance monitoring, and location tracking. So if you'd be kind enough to answer that poll, that would be very interesting information for us to have. So it looks like we're at about 50-50 between health uh, screening and, and contact tracing. And I hear from Brian that yes, you're doing multiple uh, multiples of these and we're only letting you uh, answer one. So if you wanna put in the chat what you'd like us to know, uh, that would be very helpful. And we'll be happy to share that with the rest of, uh, the, rest of the folks on the, on the call. Um, interestingly, um, before I turn this back over to Kelly, I was reading today about uh, uh, wearable devices that are being considered by some colleges to, uh, to track this and some of the privacy and other concerns around those. So certainly this conversation is gonna continue uh, into the future. So Brian says, we're doing health screening, contact tracing and surveys. Uh, and that so seems to be fairly uh, in alignment with what we're seeing from other schools. Thank you so much for doing that, Brian. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Carol. So as we were researching this topic, we came across some typical requirements that we're finding on campuses as they move towards reopening. And those include student waivers, generally for liability purposes, um, daily wellness checks, contact tracing, uh, social distancing, of course, whether that is uh, physical distancing, where they have circles around where the chairs are placed in the classroom, uh, changing pattern flows, uh, how people are allowed to go through buildings to get from classrooms, and even where those classes are located to make sure there's not a high number of people in one area of campus at any particular time. Uh, there's also schools requiring facial covers, requiring some vaccinations, and of course ongoing testing. I've seen testing kits going out to a number of our clients as they prepare for reopening. And there's also always the things going on behind the scenes. There's shift management for classroom and office cleaning. That can include um, you know, different changes to union contracts and everything else that's associated with that type of change, as well as the classroom schedule itself shifting. So there's time in the schedule for those uh, cleaning and maintenance activities to happen. There's also changes in administrative shifts. So if these are things with campus advisors, for example, where they have to make time in between each one to clean the offices um, and making those changes on campus. This also introduces other challenges such as data security. Um, you know, as Carol mentioned, if they are going the wearable device route, uh, then that introduces some ideas behind security and privacy that have to be dealt with on campus. There's also things like parent guardian approvals for underage students and interim staffing challenges, whether it's for people being out due to illness or caring for children or sick relatives, or just having to have extra um, capacity in order to handle the load. So today we wanted to talk about ways that you can use the current tools that you have on campus. You're probably using either O365 or Google already, and how you can make these types of forms. So one is Power Platform. So Microsoft Power Platform allows users to create and deploy tailored applications that can be used on desktop and mobile devices. 
uh, Microsoft actually released an app template for crisis communication that you can use as a starting point if you were trying to do a DIY approach to this type of development. The solution was actually created within 48 hours after a team was created at Microsoft to help customers during this crisis. The solution combines Microsoft Power Apps, Power Automate, Teams, and SharePoint into one cohesive solution. In it, employees can report their work status and make requests. Admins can use the app to push news updates and specific content to their organization out through mobile app notifications. Mobile app notifications are generally an extra charge on this platform. However, during this crisis, those extra fees are being waived. So definitely something to look into. You can also add RSS feeds from reputable sources, such as the CDC, directly into this Power Platform app. And so we included the link, and as Stephen mentioned, when you get the recording and the slide deck, you'll be able to see that um, if you want to investigate more. A lot of schools are looking into such no-code environments as this for this type of development, and Power Platform just really lets you leverage all of those pieces of Microsoft technology in one single spot. Then if you're looking for something a little simpler, there's also the Microsoft Forms option. There's two different flavors of Microsoft Forms. There's Forms and Pro Forms, and they have slightly different feature sets. Then you can also automate things using Power Automate, which used to be called Flow. It went through a renaming earlier this year. Now with Microsoft Forms, you can create surveys, quizzes, and make those all fillable online rather simply and quickly. You can also invite others to respond to it and see the real-time results as they're submitted. Then Power Automate allows you to build workflow automation directly into your apps with a no-code approach, which is really important. It makes it easy to maintain. And it connects to hundreds of popular apps and services, really allowing you to leverage that full Microsoft platform. On the left is a screenshot of a questionnaire I put together for internal purposes. And I was able to create this in probably an hour's time. Um, through an easy drag and drop WYSIWYG interface. Uh, to create a form, you just log into office.com and the Microsoft 365 icons will appear on the left side of your screen and forms will be one of those options. Then you simply have to create the form and name it. You can add an optional subtitle. Um, if you've ever been in any training sessions, always describe what it is so people know what you were thinking. <laughs> Um, then you can add a question through a WYSIWYG drag and drop interface. And there's question types such as choice, text, rating, and date. And then in this extra drop, drop down menu, they give you options for ranking, linkert, file upload, and net promoter score. Uh, Microsoft Forms also offers branching opportunities. So you can build logic directly into the form itself. Then to automate it, you also log into office.com. Those icons are going to appear on the left-hand side again, and Power Automate is going to be one of those options. When you select the option to create a Power Automate flow, you can create one from a template. They provide a number of templates, so if you want to have a good starting point, you can select from that list. Or you can also choose from an automated flow, an instant flow, a scheduled flow, a UI flow, or a business process flow. In this case, we used a scheduled flow, so that form can be sent out to a distinct group of users um, every day. In this case, it's at 9 a.m. in the morning. And then those results are all collected and can be reported on. Now, instead of Microsoft, you might use Google on your campus, and so Google Forms then would be another option. It's also a tool to build fillable forms and surveys, and the data is then stored in the background within Google Sheets for reference. Um, I'm a huge fan of Google Forms. Everybody at Forelli knows it. I use them for everything. Uh, the form data has the option of being stored anonymously, or it can encode it with the user's um, username. And you can also request that data, of course, in the form. An example, that link goes to a uh, COVID-19 self-assessment screener that Google has created. It go walks you through a series of questions based on the CDC database, and then says, whether or not you should make any steps towards getting tested. In this case, in the screenshot on the right, it sounded like I was feeling okay based on my no evidence of symptoms. So to use Google Forms, you log into your Google account and select Forms from the Google Apps Selector. Then, just like in Microsoft, you create a new blank form and then you have options to add questions. 
much like with Microsoft Forms, Google Forms is a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get interface, drag and drop and really easy to use and also very easy to update. And then you have options to add questions to the form, such as, such as short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, check boxes, drop down, file upload, linear scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid, date and time. Google also has a number of plugins. Um, developers have created different add-ons for Google Forms over the years. So it's a very extensible um, solution that you can choose to implement on campus. I'm gonna turn it over to Carol so she can talk about some of the commercial options available as well. So as you can imagine, a number of companies have been responding to the pandemic and the pandemic crisis. And one of those companies is Salesforce with their Work.com platform. So Work.com is actually made up of, of uh, several uh, pieces of uh, Salesforce technology, but what we're going to focus on today is the one that's related to uh, reopening. Um, and in the, uh, if you go to the Work.com site, which you will receive the link to here, but it's also just that, Work.com, you'll find uh, a COVID-19 response playbook. Um, and in that, a uh, small document is a lot of great information about how to think about the process of reopening. Now, I know many of you have already thought about it. We're at that reopening stage, but certainly we all went through uh, the first stage, which was to think about how to stabilize, if we could, uh, the environment around us and our response to that. And what we're seeing is that stabilization effort is um, uh, not that easy, uh, given the way the uh, pandemic is uh, is uh, behaving, if we could call it that, um, and the impact on a variety of both geographic and cultural uh, uh, components of our society. Um, but the reopening process and then uh, suggests that we can stabilize, that we can reopen, we can get back to business, but not business as usual. We think business as usual is probably uh, a long way off, if at all, um, but then think about how this new normal allows us to grow. The stabilization really is about mitigating the short-term risks and making sure that operations continue. And I know for the institutions that I work with, that has been um, an ongoing process since last March uh, with uh, response to crises being the primary focus. And many schools have an emergency response or a crisis response center that has been at the center of the, the response since the, the pandemic began and still has a role to play, I would suggest, at institutions uh, at large. Then in the reopening process, certainly it's a plan to orchestrate how to return to the workplace. And in this case, a very special workplace that's an institution of higher education. And through that process, really maintaining a workplace command center. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the components of a workplace command center, but in your response about how you're using technology to support the reopening process, those are areas that would be consolidated into this type of a command center. And then growing, um, and in the case of the work.com materials, growing uh, in a way uh, that gets us to the new normal, uh, whatever that is. Uh, and so uh, Salesforce calls it the next normal transformation office, but the, the next stage that we might get to. Unfortunately, these stages are not, uh, not really aligning uh, as we would like them to with the traditional academic calendar. Uh, and so we'll see how this, uh, how this impacts uh, institutions moving forward. So the, this little chart, which comes from the materials on work.com is really uh, talking about reopening as one thing that's been a goal for all of us, uh, for all businesses, including institutions of higher learning. Um, and it's really about as we stabilize, reopen and grow, thinking about how we make decisions at each stage, thinking about how we work at its, each stage, thinking how we engage our customers and constituents, and ultimately how we serve uh, society in this recovery. So as I mentioned before, work.com is made up of several components. One of them is the Workplace Command Center. And here is where uh, you, your work might fall if you chose to go this direction. So the purpose of the Workplace Command Center uh, during a reopening activity is to monitor employee health and safety, which I think everybody is attempting to do in some way or another. 
streamlined shift scheduling, because as Kelly mentioned, the, the, the changing of class schedules, the changing of the way we deliver services impacts not only those administrative offices, but how we schedule the cleaning services. If we've committed to cleaning a classroom after each offering, which some schools did, that means we really have to think very uh, uh, thoughtfully, be, be very thoughtful about how we uh, do the shift scheduling. Then of course, contact tracing. And one that I hadn't really thought about before until I, until I was working um, with this material was the reskilling. One of the things that's happening in all work is that the work is changing. Um, we know, for example, many folks had a difficult time making the transition from a standard office to a virtual office to working from home. And that involves some new kinds of skills. It involves new communication skills. It involves new organizational skills. In some businesses, the impact of the pandemic is on entirely reskilling their workforce. So my trailhead is an option that's available through work.com to build out that kind of uh, training activity. Another service that Salesforce provides through their work.com website is access to data. Um, I didn't try to give you pictures of that today, but the link is, is on this page. And certainly if you go to work.com, you'll find it pretty easily. But these are publicly available visualizations of the uh, of data that's been collected about the pandemic that can be used both for research for people who are you know, looking to see what's happened, uh, but also for response. Um, and I know many schools were looking at what's happening with the outbreaks in my state or my region uh, that I need to be thinking about as I consider bringing uh, students, faculty, and staff back to campus. What's happening in the regions that students might have to travel through to get to me? Um, and all of this is uh, neatly packaged uh, through uh, Salesforce's Tableau environment to provide a, a very nice uh, resource uh, for this kind of very important decision-making information. And then some other resources that are available through the work.com uh, site if you, have, uh, if you have access to App Exchange. Uh, one is a free app that's related to what they call V2Mom, the V2Mom approach, which is really about vision values, methods, obstacles, and measures. Now, how would this apply in a crisis? Well, it applies more to the thinking about how we're going to stabilize and reopen. Um, what, is it, what are the things that we really want to achieve? And we know in this case, we, we really want to provide students with the educational opportunity that we are mission driven to provide. Uh, what's important in this? Well, certainly we would say everyone's health and safety and well-being is at the very top of that list, but how do we, how do we combine the desire to provide education occasional opportunities with that in, in thinking outside of the box at this point. How do we get to it? What's preventing us from being successful? And I would say in that case, it's a tremendous amount of uncertainty, certainly quite a bit of fear and not really knowing in many cases how to, how to respond beyond what we've already done. And then the measures, how do you know you have it? Well, we know we have it if students come back to campus are able to follow the rules that we have put in place for everyone's well-being and uh, complete their courses. And those are, those are going to be interesting challenges as we, as we consider to, uh, to face this uh, pandemic challenge. Then, of course, Salesforce is not the only company that has been very committed to putting resources behind supporting um, all businesses and, and all organizations in uh, a safe return to the new normal. Uh, so uh, these uh, businesses that are identified on this uh, slide are ones that have uh, made a significant contribution uh, to this work. And I know many of you have RAVE as your emergency uh, response system. Uh, some of you may have Medicat as your medical records uh, and other, uh, other services uh, provider, certainly Qualtrics. Uh, one that's on here that uh, I was introduced to through this research is uh, hashtag campus clear, which happens to be a free uh, resource as well um, that's available to uh, available to schools to try out. Kelly, do you want to add anything to this? No, I, I would say I'd echo what Carol says, you know, many of you have rave. So it's a good opportunity to look into the vendors that you currently use and see if they've made efforts into developing a solution that would work. It's just going to reduce your um, reduce the impact and the time to get a solution out, especially since we're mid August right now and everybody's trying in a sprint to get back to campus. So these sort of 
off the shelf instead of DIY options might might fit in well. Thanks. So with that, we're happy to uh, entertain any questions that might have come up. If you guys want to take yourselves off mute, you can do that or feel free to type them in the chat window. Any questions? Okay. Um, if there are no questions, then um, I would uh, direct everyone to um, take a look at Forelli.com, what's new, that'll let you know from an upcoming perspective uh, what we have. Um, and looking at uh, next week, we're looking at tips, tips and tricks for optimizing a Lucian Banner student functionality, um, and that is actually going to be uh, in uh, partnership with Office Hours through eLive. So uh, we would love for anyone to join us, uh, if that makes sense for you. And then uh, back on 827, we'll be doing a part two of our back to school um, and dealing with the challenges of COVID. So we'll have a guest panel for that, uh, and you'll be able to learn about um, how they've overcome and are currently working through different scenarios. Okay, and as always, if you have any thoughts or ideas for uh, potential things or challenges that are facing your institution at the moment, please feel free to share, share those with us at info at Forelli.com, where we're always available by phone. All right, and we will hang around if anyone wants to have uh, a uh, private conversation, we can definitely hang on and uh, we can chat from there. Thank you everyone for joining us. <laughs>